Hello everyone, uh, this is Almir, VE3DAL. Uh, here I am in my uh, driveway with my uh, magnetic loop antenna. And uh, today I want to show you a couple of updates that I did on the uh, antenna system. Uh, one of them is the coupling loop and the other one is a uh, 12 volt uh, DC little motor uh, that I added with the capacitor. Uh, to be able to do uh, uh, remote tuning. And uh, last week I, I brought this antenna to the uh, cottage last week, weekend, and uh, I was really, really impressed at how this antenna performs o uh, over there. Um, the, my first video when I did it here at home in my backyard, I was a little bit disappointed. Uh, uh, but because the, uh, the neighborhood where I live and the houses are so close by, I was not able to, to tell how good this antenna, uh, this antenna it is. But uh, over there at the cottage, I was, wow, I was really surprised how well uh, it did over there. Um, I did many, many contacts over there. Uh, at one point, uh, I contacted somebody in Calgary, Alberta, and uh, he reported uh, my signal was plus 31. It was, I was like, what? Plus 31. I, was, I never got this kind of signal with my other antennas. And uh, right after I was like plus 11 uh, in Great Britain. And, uh, and also I did uh, some uh, DX over, all over Europe, uh, as far as uh, Ru uh, European Russia and uh, Alaska, so it, w the, it was really like that blow my mind how, how well this antenna uh, performs over there. And, uh, and I, even though it's not 100% efficient, I think uh, uh, right now maybe falls uh, between 50 and 60% uh, efficient this antenna it is. Uh, due to the connections, uh, maybe the size of it, uh, you know, there are a couple of things, but at this point I'm so happy with and uh, so now I'm able to do the uh, tuning remotely. Uh, it's very basic, I'll show you around, uh, but it works and uh, it works just fine. So uh, let's take a look, a close look at what I have done. So with the coupling loop in here, um, so if you, uh, if you remember my first, first video, I had uh, a couple of Velcros uh, on, on each side here and uh, holding the, uh, the little loop. And uh, the problem was like uh, if, the, if there was a little wind like today, uh, the, the couple of loop would move a little bit around and the SWR would fall right off. Uh, and then you had to go back and readjust and all that. And then it was very hard to readjust with the, uh, the Velcros there. So uh, now I came up with this uh, clamp in here that I printed on my uh, TD printer. And now with the, uh, the little uh, uh, plastic uh, uh, screw and, uh, and nut there, so I'm able to uh, adjust up and down quite easy. And, and it holds the, uh, the coupling loop. And uh, so now my SWR improved quite a bit. Now I can go as low as uh, 1.05, 1.02. It's like almost perfect and it holds there. So that is a, a little improvement like that. It makes a huge difference on the antenna performance. So I was uh, pretty, pretty happy with this. And, uh, and then down here, as you can see that there is the little uh, motor uh, 12 volts uh, DC these are the reduction gears and uh, it's connected here I put a little uh, banana plugs in here and the wire goes right in uh, to the uh, the speed controller so uh, take a look at what I have at, like how I when I finish this uh, this part in here uh, take a look at it all right so I just finished to assemble the uh, the little uh, 12 volts uh, motor to the uh, capacitor to uh, be able to do uh, to, uh, remote uh, tuning. Uh, down here we have the uh, 12 volts uh, motor, it's a little one. 
and um, I used to use this motor f uh, to do time lapse photography on uh, on rails, so it would go like from uh, left to right or right to left. So I thought that would work for this project, and um, the the gears are are uh, PLA uh, plastic gears that I printed on my TD printer, which is uh, something like this, just little ones, because you don't want to put. Uh, a aluminum or metal gears there because then uh, all the voltage probably would transfer to the motor and damage to the, the motor and the, the speed controller and uh, connected to the motor here we have the uh, speed controller which is this little guy here and uh, so this is the knob on and off plus the uh, control the speed the more you turn the more speed will give and uh, this is the uh, forward and reverse and in the middle it's it's a stop so uh, and then from here it goes to a little 12 uh, 12 volts battery and uh, at first when I try it didn't work out because the uh, the shaft of the capacitor was too hard and uh, so what I have learned is that uh, if I would lose a there is a little alley alley key uh, bolt inside of this nut here that uh, I, I loosen up uh, quite a few times and then uh, it got really smooth and uh, so I didn't know that that uh, so that that it controls the uh, the, the smooth or the hardness that you want the uh, the blades to mesh so um, so yeah so I just finished and uh, and uh, so this is just a piece of uh, plastic uh, it's like kitchen cutting board and then in the back to hold that on the uh, on the uh, PVC mast, uh, I printed also a little a uh, couple of clamps like that, which is uh, something like this on my uh, TD printer, and then uh, attached to the back here the uh, this uh, white plastic, and um, so there's one on this side of here, and then and there's one in the front, which is just down there. And uh, and then to the trickiest part was to uh, uh, level up the motor to reach the uh, the shaft of the capacitor. So that was a bit tricky, but uh, I think I got it. So uh, so let's see. Uh, and as you can see, I I hook it up the uh, the uh, capacitance meter. So when I bought this capacitor, it says. It starts at uh, 15 uh, picofarads to 240 picofarads, but I think, I'm not too sure, for me it starts at 22, 21, 22. So, um, all right, let's see. Uh, so, and then I just, uh, you increase the speed. And uh, as you can see, it's a uh, rotate. It's really fast now, but of course you can slow down quite a bit and as you can see the capacitance increase yeah actually it goes to 240 somewhere in there well, as you saw uh, it was pretty basic uh, building uh, you know the materials that I use I mean it's you know this it can be all improved later but uh, just to have an idea if it worked or not Apparently, I did my first attempt, uh, it did not work, and uh, the reason was because the uh, the gears uh, were too small, and uh, so that would uh, the first time when I put on the on the PVC uh, uh, mast, it would uh, it would slip, and that it did not work. So I figured that uh, I needed a a bigger gear with bigger teeth to grab the uh, the other one each other. So now it works just fine, it works just perfect now with the uh, bigger uh, gears and uh, so yeah, so it's uh, pretty basic remote uh, tuning you know, so uh, let's see how, uh, how I tune uh, I go about to tuning this antenna and uh, so there are a couple of steps that I take uh, first I see where I am and then second uh, you can do the listen uh, to see the highest pitch of the, uh, the, the, the where the frequency in this case is the FT8. The FT8 is it's easy because the 
the signal noise is always there so it's it's a bit easier than the SSB to tune in so then uh, second I just listened for the highest pitch and then I uh, stop somewhere in the highest pitch that I think it is and then I hook up the, the cable on the on the meter the SWR meter and then do the final tuning so I'll show you how it is so as you can see I move it around the capacitor so I gave more capacitance so now it's on the uh, on the left side of the band so we are aiming to uh, the uh, 14 075 which is followed right there so we'll do the listen uh, first and see all right so we're gonna listen for the highest pitch I'm gonna give it the less capacitance it's gonna go all over let's see see it's already passed by so I put the brake and then I go back See, it, it passed by, so I go back again. So I believe it's somewhere in there. And then the, the final tuning I do on the uh, SWR meter. So there it is, guys. Uh, you see how close I got to the uh, finding the highest pitch? And uh, pretty close, you know, uh, 14. 095 and I'm looking for 14075 so that's very close so um, it, it, it's kind of tricky because it takes a little while for you to find out where the highest pitch is by listening and uh, so at this point that I, I just do a very fine tune uh, with the little uh, playing with that little uh, switch there up and down and then eventually I get right on top of where I am where I want to be And there he is, guys. Right there. Look at that. R right where I want to be. 1.09. All right. So let's see in, uh, if we can do some uh, contact. So there we go. Finally came back. <laughs> With the report, I was uh, minus 07. So that's not bad. And, uh, but you see how long it takes to uh, go loops around, probably because the, uh, then again, because the signals that I get around here. So, but it's all good. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this uh, antenna. And uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, I added a uh, one one ballon at the uh, coupling loop. And that uh, was because somebody uh, suggested me to do that and uh, see if I would get a better reception transmission and, I, and actually I think he did a little bit so so that's what I did I used a, a little uh, one one ballon that I have and it's uh, max uh, uh, 100 watts and uh, but even though like I never uh, transmit 100 watts uh, like right now uh, transmitting uh, 20 watts so probably uh, the next step would be uh, to, to eliminate all the wires going to the, uh, the motor and do wireless uh, uh, maybe Wi-Fi or uh, Bluetooth and uh, that would uh, would be a little more advanced project uh, uh, with the uh, one of the Arduino uh, borders uh, I'm pretty sure you can do that uh, I am familiar with the Arduino boards uh, I use it at uh, so many times with my LED cubes to do the animations uh, on the cube so I think it will, would work in this this type of uh, project and uh, so that would be the next one also I'm thinking about to maybe uh, build uh, another version maybe slightly bigger uh, to get to the 40 meters I can get to the 40 meters with this one but it's uh, it's it's not efficient I think it's it falls maybe 20% on on 40 meters so I've I didn't not even bother uh, you know that low so it needs to be bigger the loop the bigger loop and uh, and also maybe I build a smaller one for the for 10, uh, 10 12 15 17 meters uh, this is gonna be my everyday antenna uh, the reason is the logistic part uh, 
uh, it's not that easy. In this case, you know, the big loop, it's about uh, three feet wide. And uh, so it makes it hard for you to transport, you know what I mean, do a quick uh, park uh, operation or, or stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I love to uh, experience new, new technology, new antennas. And uh, yeah, so pretty happy with it. And uh, so, anyways, guys, uh, thank you for stopping by, and I'll uh, we'll see you in the next video, 73.